Um, tell me about the hard problem of consciousness. So what is, what is the hard problem of consciousness? So... <laughs> David Chalmers, who's a philosopher, coined this problem, coined, coined this term, and it, it references, it essentially creates a hierarchy of, of problems or challenges to solve in the realm of consciousness. And what he essentially said is, you know, there's a lot of things that will be easy, you know, like, not, not necessarily easy, but will be clearer, establishing, you know, vision, hearing, all of these like basic elements of consciousness that you can directly perceive as to as to how they occur, how they're generated by the brain and the sensory systems and things like that. But the hard problem of consciousness is essentially why do we have a subjective experience? Why is there something that it's like to perceive what we perceive? So, and this is still a lot of people... A lot of people, even 20 years ago, you were dissuaded as a scientist or as a neuroscientist to <clears throat> from even talking about consciousness because it was like too woo-woo to talk about. But now that a lot of the things, the base, the more basic elements of it have been mapped or partially solved, this last part is still a huge contentious issue whether it's from a philosophical perspective or there's still no real understanding of of consciousness itself so <clears throat> there's a another philosopher i believe named thomas nagel and he wrote an essay and he said it was uh called what is it like to be a bat so it was talking about consciousness and subjective experience in that if you're a bat, the subjective experience of, and he chose this specifically because of the incredible difference between our perceptive perception systems and its, you know, what is it like to live as a creature who largely perceives the world through echolocation as opposed to the way that we do? So when you look at that, when you look at how it is that science can describe so many physical things but when it comes to consciousness and subjective experience there's a whole bunch of thought experiments around it there's i forget the name of it but uh there's an experiment about a thought experiment of a woman who's a color researcher but she's never seen she lives in a black and white house she's only ever seen shades of black and white and gray but she's the world's foremost expert on color perception. She knows everything about it possible. So this is, so essentially she knows all the empirical information possible about color, but she has no subjective experience of it. So they talk about what would happen when she leaves her house and goes out into the, the world with color. Has she learned anything new about color, right? Now that she's subjectively experienced, you know, the green of the trees, the red of the flowers, is that new information? And this is, and a lot of people don't understand, like, they're like, what is, what's the point of that? Well, it's important because that's what is like the delineation. The hard problem is why, why do we have a subjective experience of things? Why are we aware of what red is like? Why, why don't, why isn't it just like a direct intimation of that information rather than having rather than having an awareness that you're experiencing things you know rather than just a direct experience not not having any it's it's even difficult to talk about in a clear way but our subjective experience of everything our subjective awareness of everything we experience is what the hard problem is, is why, how does it arise? How does consciousness as this stream arise? So they're doing, they're doing experiments with respect to like when someone goes under an anesthetic and watching their neural activity, because under anesthetic, you have no, no consciousness whatsoever, or there is dreamless sleep and things like that. So there's real, 
this is still an area almost as deep as what is at the base layer of physical reality. That's how some philosophers say it's just what they call an epiphenomenon. It's like, it's just a useless aggregate of something that emerged. It doesn't mean anything. And there are other individuals who think that it, it is so crucial. It is so crucial in, in the way that we perceive the world, the way that we, the way that we structure experiments, the way that everything that we do is filtered through consciousness. And some people have said that our inability to, the reason we'll never understand the universe fully is because it always has to be filtered through our consciousness. So some people will point to like, oh, well, how about these scientific experiments? Like, obviously there's a reality that exists outside of our consciousness, but some people will say, well, no, actually, for instance, you know, <clears throat> that they're like, well, look, you point a telescope somewhere and you see a certain thing. And it's like, yeah, but the telescope was constructed by people who have a particular level of perception and everything, everything we do has to be filtered through that. So we're kind of stuck. But the main thing about the hard problem of consciousness is what is it? How does it come about? Because right now, they can say, oh, when this happens in the brain, this area, when this, when this perception happens, this area of the brain is activated. But that doesn't, that's what's called a neurocorrelative consciousness. That doesn't mean anything specifically. It means that we're aware of some wiring, but we don't, we still don't know how essentially the meat of our brain, the, the physical elements that make up us as humans, generate this experience that is not necessarily physical. So, and yeah, I just read a book about panpsychism where this Philip Goff, panpsychism used to be very poorly regarded as well. And essentially the theory is that panpsychism is that the consciousness is an integral part of the universe down to matter. So small, even electrons, small part portions of the physical universe experience extremely small, have extremely small access to some conscious experience. It would be nothing like us. Like we're not saying that molecules think or anything like that. And some posit that as you get into more complicated life forms and it may require a brain structure, it may actually require this, that that's when you get the emergent properties of consciousness of, of us as humans and other animals and things like that. So the hard problem of consciousness is, yeah, it's still, it's still deeply contested and you can talk about it, you know, um, you can look at everything that's going on in this research and it shows how little we know that still to this point, there are a great number of contested theories around what consciousness actually is, whether it be human or other. Um, and in science, a lot of people aren't aware, but you don't want 10 different theories that all sound decent. That means you're off the mark. That means you don't really, you're, you know, in physics, you don't have 10 different theories. You might have some, some dispute in certain areas, but yeah, for the, the hard problem of consciousness, um, there's still a huge amount of ground to cover and we still don't really have a clue as to what this experience is. Yeah. Uh.